It's almost time. Now we'll find out once and for all about Clark Kent, Superman. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a TV show. Yes, but who is he? What's his name? He's Superman. Golly, Clark, won't that be wonderful seeing Superman? Fighting a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and television the me TV way. No one can do the things that Superman does. The Adventures of Superman. Now on me TV Fresno, Xfinity 187. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this day. It's a Tuesday morning and we have a racing legend in the house. You will immediately recognize his name and probably his face. You can call in at 436-ME-TV, option 11. He, along with a friend of his, will be here for the entire hour from 10 to 11 today. Back in a moment. <music> program on a Tuesday morning, my friends, here on the showroom floor at Ventura TV. We're doing the world of sports uh, today. Usually that feature comes on a Wednesday, but today we're kind of switching gears and we're kind of focusing on sports uh, for a special reason here on a Tuesday morning because the Indy 500, the 99th running, took place this last weekend. But first, I should remind you that each and every Monday through Friday, live here at 10 o'clock on Comcast Channel 187, you can catch our show. If you don't have cable, though, hey, not a problem. I can get a digital antenna right here at the store, and you can catch us on 43.6 or 13.1 live. And then if you can't do that, uh, then you can catch the replay at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at 13.6, U2, 8 o'clock at night on 4.6 Biz TV. And, of course, the Twitter account is at John Mallows. Uh, me TV. So today we're talking about one of the greatest sporting events in the history of mankind, my friends. I'm talking about the Indianapolis 500, the greatest spectacle in racing. The 99th running took place this past Memorial Day weekend. Of course, on Sunday, the race won by Juan Pablo Montoya. The second time this man has won the race. He's from Colombia. Last time he won it was back in 2000. He's only raced at Indy three times. But today, we've got a legend in the house, a racing legend. Does the name Vukovic ring a bell with you? It should, my friends. Let's roll the videotape, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Three generations of racers that include some spectacular finishes at the Indianapolis 500. Take you back six decades at uh, the two and a half mile oval. Bill Sr. won the Indy twice and was leading that race a third straight year when he was killed coming out of turn number two back in 1955, the same year as yours truly was born. His son, Bill Jr., uh, who uh, raced at the old Brickyard 12 times, won the Rookie of the Year back in 1968. There he is. He finished in second in the accident-prone, rain-delayed 500 back in 1973. And his son, Bill III, who was warming up his car in the time trials before being killed at Mesa Marin Raceway in Bakersfield back in 1990. He had been named Rookie of the Year, just like his father, at Indy back in 1988, where he finished 14th. The name Vukovic stands alongside some other prominent racing families at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. How about the Andrettis? Mario on the right, his son, Michael on the left, and of course, grandson, and then the Unsers. There is Bobby on the left, Al, and of course, Al Jr., who is not pictured there. Billed as the greatest spectacle in racing, Ray Haroon won the first race back in 1911, but the 99th running of the race was held over the weekend, of course, this past weekend. The biggest winners ever at Indy include A.J. Foyt, Al Unzer, Rick Mears, all have won the race four times. Mears had six pole positions. Roger Penske, the most successful IndyCar owner, has now won 
16 races at the old Brickyard. He won this past weekend as Montoya crossed the finish line first. It may be the most grueling race ever. Two and a half mile oval, 200 laps around for 500 miles. This is the first IndyCar race back in 1911, won by the one and only Ray Haroon. Live in our studio right now is Mike Garabedian. He worked the pits at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He worked with Bobby Unser, Michael Andretti, and Gary Bettenhausen. And to his left is the one and only Billy Vukovic Jr. He was the Rookie of the Year at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway back in 1968. He finished in second in 1973. Both are here to answer your questions. Racing legend here in the studio today, 436 MeTV, option 11. We're back with our program in just a moment. Must watch news channel in Europe. Frigidaire. It means the first refrigerator. It means a history of innovations that help make your home life better. And now we introduce the new Frigidaire French door refrigerator with over 100 ways to organize for maximum flexibility. Built with adjustable flip up and slide under shelving and stackable crisper drawers. It's the refrigerator that flexes to fit it all, no matter what your day will bring. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Glad to have you along on this Tuesday morning, and I will say I love IndyCar racing, and uh, it's been, seems like 150 years since I've been back to Indy, but uh, I covered the Indianapolis 500 from 1982 to 86. It was a long time ago. It's a different race now. It's the same track, but the technology has changed so much. But uh, would, you got, would you not agree? The technology has changed. Everything is different. I mean... 30, 35 years ago was a lifetime ago, was it not? Big time. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Jr., yeah. good to see you. My pleasure to meet you. You're a racing legend, Thank my you. friend. Mike, Thank good you. to see my you. Pleasure. Thank How you, are you? I'm All fine. right. You know, do you mind if we take a phone call real quick here? Caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, I, I, he is a legend. I just want to. Uh, I, I, I would ask a, a simple question. What? Why do they get into a race when they know it's going to be dangerous, you know? I mean, you've got to have uh, nerves of steel to get in, in the cars nowadays, or it'll maybe 34 years ago. The last, it's the same thing, but the technology is a lot different, you know, protection and whatnot, you know, helmets and uniforms, fires and whatnot. Boy, I, and not only that, it's noisy. You know, <laughs> I've been to one race and man, I, I got to get those airplanes in there. You know, you've got to be strong. You have to have a steel of nerves. But how old were you when you got into it, and why did you get into it? I, I just feel that it's, it's a dangerous sport, but okay. thousands of people go out there to see it, especially in Indianapolis. I, I'd be crazy not to say that, but yeah. you know what? I, I give you guys credit because you guys really got, you know, racing nerves inside your your, your system because I, I I would never get – I get I – get, uh, you know, I get all tense when I get into my own car, and at 80 miles an hour, I'm thinking I'm going 200. Yeah. Uh, and okay. Now all right. Thank you very much, Billy. Do you want to pick it up? How do you How do you do it? You got to have nerves of steel. Why do I race? Yeah. For money. <laughs> simple as, as that. Simple huh? as that. Really? Uh, were you ever frightened behind the wheel? No. You never were. No. What about the incredible speeds? Uh, even when you were racing uh, around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Uh, the speeds uh, were incredible. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little well, bit. Well, it, it really, it, everything's relevant. Um, the speed really didn't bother me. Um, I think I, the quickest I ever ran was like 200 mile an hour. And uh, I think the record now is 237, right, Mike? Yeah, yeah, right Mike. In there, yeah. And uh, it didn't bother me at all. Did you look forward to it? Yeah. You yeah, did? Yeah. You did. The faster, the better, huh? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I've always wondered because, I, like I said, I, I, I covered Indy for about five years, mm -hmm. uh, way back when, and I always wondered, going 200 plus miles an hour, how is it maneuvering through traffic? It's not bad at all. 
how do you do it? Is it instinct? Is it skill? Is it all of instinct the and skill? And how do you learn that? By racing midgets and sprint cars, <laughs> like you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty much. Mike, you worked the pits yes. uh, for some legends yourself. Yes, yeah, so I was pretty oh, my fortunate. Goodness. Yeah. Wow, you're talking about Bobby Unser. I mean, the great Bobby Unser, uh, Michael Andretti, Bentenhausen. Yeah. Yes. Um, from your perspective, from the pits. Uh, you know, when I first went to Indy, and I, I stood down there at pit row, and I looked, and the cars just whizzed by in a, in a split second. It's just hard to imagine going that fast. Well, it's still amazing to me. I mean, I did a lot of races and, and went to a lot of other races, and I don't know how these guys do that myself, honestly. Uh, a lot of people ask, did you ever drive a car? I go, no, I, I can never do that. It takes a special, special person. What kind, to, what kind of a person does it take? I think focused, number one. Uh, I think these guys are brilliantly focused. You have to be to run that long and uh, physically fit and obviously very brave, very, very brave. Billy, would you not admit that you, you've got to have courage? Yes, courage, yeah. Did you have a lot of courage when you drove? Yes, yes. You did? Yeah. yeah. And, and what else do you have to have besides courage, do you think? If you were to advise some of these young drivers today, what would you tell them you, you got to have besides some I'd tell them be smart, fast, and smooth. Yeah. 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 Smart, fast, and smooth. Yeah, that's and, right. And Billy was Billy was really smooth. I would say that when I say focus, that kind of goes with smoothness. He's very, very smooth driver. Yeah. And, and that's why his finish record is what it was, because he, he finished a lot of Indy races up in the front. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah. We're going to talk about his record when we come back. Hey, we've got a uh, legend in the house here. We've got uh, Billy Vukovic uh, Jr. He uh, finished as Rookie of the Year in 1968, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We're going to talk to him more. We'll talk to Mike Garabedian, and we'll go over Sunday's race. As you know, Juan Pablo Montoya won his second Indy 500 on Sunday. It was only the third time he has raced at Indy. He won it back in 2000. Isn't that amazing? That young man from Columbia is quite a driver indeed coming from last place to to move his way up through traffic and eventually win the race 436 me tv option 11 we're back in a moment attention all units we have reports of two motorcycle cops protecting california's highway that's for us good buddy the men of chips are on me tv i am john baker i'm john baker he's officer baker he's the blonde one hi there Officer Poncherello, man. Frank Poncherello. Oh, I'm Frank Poncherello. And he's the one who's Eric Estrada. There's no way I wouldn't remember a name like that. Catch the blonde one and the one who's Eric Estrada. On now Chips. on MeTV Fresno, Xfinity 187. Back here with the one and only Billy Vukovic Jr., who raced at Indy a dozen times. Can you believe that? And Mike Garabedian, who worked the pits for some legends himself, including the Andrettis and um, the Unsers and uh, Bentenhausen, and, and uh, just has a whole history of his own at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, uh, it's called for Bill. Yeah, go ahead. Turn your TV set down, though. I beg your pardon? You've got to turn down your TV set, please. Okay, I just did. All right, go Bill, ahead. Bill, I don't know if you know who this is, yeah. but uh, we grew up together. He's always been a little bit ahead of everyone as far as uh, going past. You can ask him who, whose car did he first drive, and uh, I think you'll be surprised when he tells you. Anyway, Bill Vukovic, you've been my hero. Yeah. Forever. Is, El and, uh, is this Alan? We're both old men now. Is this Alan? And I still love you like a brother. Is this Alan? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> First car I drove was Red Staten's car, right? No. It's a joke. Your car, car. Your car. Your car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a great call. So who, who was that, by the way? Alan Morris, good friend of mine. Okay. You've known him a lifetime Long now. Long time racing racing guru so uh so 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 what what made billy vukovic jr such a good racer a, a a great racer in in the minds of many here in the central valley mike uh, I, I i'd like your perspective i on think that. smooth bill hit it really well in my opinion you was, mentioned that earlier yeah. smooth what is that how That's do you consistent how do you define you're not overdriving you know you save the car mm -hmm. i'm talking about in indy cars now midges he was a little he was it was different but 
But I always saw Billy as, as a very smart driver and a really smooth driver, you know, and, and know when to go fast, but not necessarily fast all the time. Am I correct, Billy? In other words, uh, you know when to go. You can, you can wear cars out going early or wear yourself out. But he always had that sense and that ability to to be smooth. And I would think somebody like that that I would equate that to would be uh, – Al Mario Lancer? Andretti? No, Mario wasn't smooth. Billy was, I wouldn't think. How about Michael Andretti? No, not either. I would say more like Rick Mears or Al Unser, uh Jr., a senior. Okay. Those were smooth guys. They won a lot of races, okay. uh, but they always weren't leading all the races all the time. Uh, kind of like Jimmy Johnson now in stock cars. He's there when, when the race is towards the end. He's there every time. But he's not out front all day long. Is Go that ahead. close? That's right. Yeah, yeah, he's right. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't overdrive, no. you didn't underdrive, no. you knew when to put it in gear and go. Um, were you aware of where all the other drivers yes. were on yes. the track? Yes. You were. Yes. You think that was one of your strengths? Yes. Um, why were you so successful at Indy? One of the most difficult racetracks in the entire world. Uh, the world descends upon Indy, of course, Memorial Day. Any, every race driver would, now that's the dream, to drive at Indy. Why were you so successful there? Mike, you can answer that probably better than I can. <laughs> Again, I think, you know, if you, you look go at... back to being smooth yeah. and yeah, consistent. If, you, if <laughs> you look at Billy's, uh, if you look at his 12 race starts, if, yeah. if the car didn't finish, you can't count those. But the, the, when he finished, he was always top 10. You know, what, second, third, sixth, seventh? Right. And you have to remember that was in the heyday of the sport when you run against the Unsers and the Andrettis and A.J. Foyt. A.J. Foyt, you know, so it was a tough field, and he was always there. And like I was saying yesterday, I, I looked at some stats too. He ran 158 Indy car races, top 10, 85 of those. That meant half of the Indy car races he started, he was in the top 10. That's quite a tribute to... Yeah. To being smooth and consistent. I want to talk about your father a little bit. All right. Uh, he uh, won Indianapolis in 1953 and 1954, mm -hmm. was leading the race in 1955, same year I was born, mm -hmm. <laughs> 1955, back before I was born. And I, you know, I just want to talk about your father. Can we roll a videotape again? 1955, Indianapolis 500, the, uh, the black and white footage. Bill Vukovic Sr. Uh, 1951 to 1955, we just got some stats here. Laps completed at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, 676 laps completed by your father. Do you know how many of those laps he led? 485 wow. of those laps. That. That's a 71% wow. average. That's amazing. I, I think that's that. the highest of, uh, percentage of leading laps. That, that 71 percent that's amazing i didn't know that, that that's figure. that's yeah. over 71 it's 71.75 yeah. if you want to be exact yeah and i guess i guess we do but i mean uh, what what in your opinion you saw your father race you were old enough what what made him a great racer i mean great one of the all time i think greats. my dad came out of the depression my dad came out of the depression and uh it was a way to make a buck simple as that he made money doing it no education, school hard knocks. That's why he was he was good. Mm -hmm. Aggressive driver yes, was he? Very aggressive. Yeah, but smart. Smart, yeah. Yeah. And what did you learn from him by watching him? I was too young. Mm -hmm. I only saw my dad run Indy just one lap in 1952. It was a warm up lap, and I never saw him run Indy. Mm hmm. But you saw him practice. Yeah, one time, one lap, one lap. Yeah. Were you not allowed to go to the track, or? I was allowed to go to the track, yeah. But you didn't go. Well, I was too young. I see. Yeah. Remember, this was back in the in the fifties. You didn't right. have the airplanes and all that stuff, you know. Go. Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk about Bill Senior for a minute, Mike? Mm -hmm. Well, I I'm fortunate enough. We were talking about this on the way o uh, over. I. I was fortunate enough to grow up in the same neighborhood, so I got to see him as a human being all the time. But after the war, when they were running midget races at uh, what well, was Fresno Airport Speedway, I start seeing him when I was about five or six years old. And I have almost on a weekly basis, because they ran every Sunday night it was, right? And I had to go. I mean, I didn't have a choice because my dad worked there. <laughs> so from probably five years solid, I saw him run every week, uh, just locally. Bill Senior. Bill Senior, yeah, and uh, 
And then fortunately, I, I was around the family so much because I went all through school with Bill's sister, although I didn't know Bill as a child, but his sister and I were classmates all through school from grand, kindergarten through uh, graduation time. So I was around it. I was real fortunate. It was a good time, and uh, I know he was a hard charger in a midgets for sure. Go ahead, Bill. You want to say something? No, 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 no. Okay. I thought you wanted to add something no, about no, your no, father. No, no, no. All right. Um, okay. We're going to continue here with our conversation with Mike Garabedian. Uh, he worked the pits at Indy for some of the greatest racers in history. And you're talking about the Unsers, the Andretti's, the Bentonhausen's. And we got Billy Vukovic Jr. here in the house. 436 Me TV Option 11. We're back with our program here in just a moment. Hello, I'm John Walsh. We need your help to capture this fugitive. Francisco Molina Nieve has been on the run since March 2008. The police and the FBI need your help tracking this coward down. He's wanted for brutally beating his girlfriend and for the use of a firearm. He has three freckles and a crescent shape under his right eye. Call the Colorado FBI at 303-629-7171 if you know where he's hiding. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified number one rated high efficiency cabrio from Whirlpool Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Whirlpool cabrio laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. We're back here on the program today, and if you'd like to call in and ask a question to Bill Vukovic Jr., raced at Indy a dozen times, and we're going to talk to him about that 1973 race here in a moment. Uh, 436 Me TV Option 11, and Mike Garabedi, and a lifelong friend who worked the pits at Indy for many, many years for some of the greatest uh, names in racing. And I, I want to roll the videotape 1973 Indianapolis 500. This thing was rain delayed. What, it went on for two, three days? Yeah. yeah. And you had a, a crash here at the beginning. This is the race, uh, of course, Jim McKay doing the commentary here, the legendary broadcaster. First lap, here it is. Uh, the crash will occur. Um, and there it is right there. Remember Salt Walther, he, his car turned upside down. It was just it was just skidding across the pavement. Where were you at this, at this point I here? I was right next to Salt Walther. You were right wow. next to him. I didn't realize that, though. Mm. Mm. And what do you remember about that? I knew that uh, before the race, but not before the race, I would look at the lineup and I'd pick out trouble spots. Car right there, no, that's uh, that's that's Mosley. Mosley yeah. yeah. And I'd pick out trouble spots, and he was he was one of them that I wanted to be in front of him at the start of the race. Why? How'd you know that? Because it wasn't that good. Yeah, true. So you before the race, you I, knew he was trouble. I knew he was going to be trouble. And felt well, that he was going to be trouble. I, I, I didn't. I didn't see the, the the starting lineup in 1973. I should have looked at that. Was he to your left or your right? He was to my uh, right. He was to your right. So that means that um, I was a couple couple. You were on the inside then mm -hmm. of him. And would you rather have been on the outside of him? I just find like there was. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. You saw what happened. You saw what happened. And, and then I, I, I do want to roll another piece of videotape, and I want to caution everybody at home. Um, it is very graphic. It's the Swede Savage crash in 1973. He died. Uh, one of the most violent crashes I've ever seen anywhere in any race, ever. Let's roll a videotape. And Billy, I want to ask you, where were you, on the back stretch? I was on the back stretch, yeah. This is uh, the Swede Savage crash that's coming up coming here. Coming off of four, Come off yeah. of four. Yeah, and then, um, when um, you came upon the crash, what do you remember seeing? Well, I remember the Goodyear uh, tire representative. Uh, there it is right there. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Wanted us to, to go buy it. We stopped before before the accident, and he didn't want us to go over there because he knew he was yes, right. Yeah. He didn't die then, but he died a week, a couple weeks later, Mike. Yeah, shortly after that. Yeah. yeah. But you did you drive through the debris here? No, stopped. You didn't. You stopped. stopped. Yeah. You stopped. They stopped the race. You stopped the race, so nobody drove through that no, debris. No, no. Okay, and then you got out of your car, yeah. obviously, and you, would you walk back to the piss? You had walk, to we walked to the back to the you know, pits. Right, yeah. right. And like I said, a very graphic uh, scene here. So, uh, Swede Savage, 1973 race, rain delay, 
very accident prone race. Prior to this, Salt Walther had, had crashed, but he didn't die. He survived his injuries. Uh, he, he really did. So when you see something like this, Billy, how do you keep going? How do you keep racing? Oh, it just breaks your heart. Yeah. Yeah. But you gotta, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. And when you see footage like this, and does it, does it conjure up memories yeah. for you? Yeah, yeah. It does. What do you think about? Sad. Yeah. It is. Mike, were you there in '73? Yeah, I was there. Uh, I, actually, I was with a car out of Fresno, one of the Gearhart cars, and uh, we were involved in the wreck, but. Uh, not eliminated. We had to go back and make repairs, but uh, we st we restarted when it started again, and uh, that was an awful year. Uh, I didn't even go back in '74 after that because I kind of thought that was enough. Uh, it was too many things happened that month, so I kind of lost the uh, desire for about a year, and then I wanted to go back again. But that was not a good year. It it leaves you with a sad, kind of empty feeling yeah uh did, does it ever bring to mind does it do you ever question yourself why am i doing this um billy no how about you mike no, <laughs> no these guys are special reader guys no uh uh you have to put it behind you i mean don't forget also that year one of his his crew members got killed too in the pit so it was a double hit uh so he yeah. got killed and then he, had, he lost a crew member that was running down to the uh to the wreck and he got run over and uh, it was just a not, a not a fun year at all it's a year i don't no. even like think about no much. it is a lot safer now though with the cars with the technology i mean you can hit the wall and the car could just disintegrate and a, a driver just walks away well in them days we were we were we were surrounded by fuel yeah there were 40 gallons on the left 40 gallons on the right now they're what there's 25 yeah, yeah. gallons and they're behind the driver yeah Mm -hmm. In my day, we were sitting in a fuel tank. Fuel tank. Middle of a fuel tank, basically. Middle yeah. of a fuel tank. Wow, and that's the that's the big difference. That's the today. big difference. Is that why it's safer that's today? That's right, exactly. Yeah, and the technology, as we, as we said, is mm -hmm. is is changed. Well, so they have much. soft walls, softer walls, not soft walls, but softer walls, and uh, like Bill said, you know, you were sitting in right in the middle of a lot of fuel which is yeah. i don't know how they did that these guys get in the car and be surrounded by fuel that's what i'm saying you got to have yeah. a lot of courage i mean maybe bill doesn't think so but i, I brainless. think brainless yeah, yeah, brainless yeah no, kind of... i mean i mean no no not really i mean um i i don't i don't I, I don't agree with that at all i think you have to have courage uh determination and it's something i couldn't do i, no, I mean no i way. couldn't even no. i couldn't now i did take now roger mears who was rick mears brother did take uh, myself and a photographer around the car in a pay, uh, around the track in a pace uh, car uh, about four or five times at 160 plus, and that was <laughs> you could say that was fun, but it was a little it was a little hairy. Do it for three hours. <laughs> no, <thank you. laughs> I'd probably have to go to the restaurant yeah, a couple yeah, of times, you know, one. once or twice. Anyway, go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Hey, let me ask you a couple of questions real quick. <laughs> Do you drive differently on the highway when you're not on the racing track? Uh, I, I would say yes, because yeah. uh, you know, you're used to going fast. Yes. And another thing I would like to ask, Do you, did your wife ever want you to, to quit the sport? I mean, if I was the wife, I think I never ask her. Yeah. You never asked your wife? <laughs> How she felt? That's how we made a buck. Had, had to make a buck. Was your wife ever frightened for you? Yeah. Oh, she yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. Shall we mention her name? Joyce. Joyce. Joyce yeah. It's Joyce. Yeah. Joyce Vukovic. Mm -hmm. Very nice lady. Mm -hmm. And but Very she never. Nice. She never. She, she had to worry about you. Oh, she did. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the toughest uh, sports ever. Uh, auto racing, whether it's uh, NASCAR or Indianapolis, uh, doesn't matter. Billy Bukovic Jr. is here to talk to you, the viewers at home. 436 Me TV Option 11. Mike Garabedian is here. Work the pits for Unzer and Dreddy and Bettenhausen. We're back with our program and your phone calls. And when we come back, we'll dissect what happened at the Indy 500 this past weekend. Back in a moment. <laughs>
taking care of laundry taking too much of your time? Have you become a missing mom? With a new fast, efficient washer and dryer from Ventura TV Video Appliance, you'll spend more of your day the way you want. Save now on Frigidaire's Advanced Affinity Laundry Pair. Let Frigidaire save you energy, water, and time. Don't spend your life on laundry. Upgrade today at Ventura TV Video Appliance and save. Back here on the show, connect with me on MeTV Fresno on this Tuesday morning. We're talking about the world of sports and the Indianapolis 500 here with Billy Vukovic uh, Jr. He's a, a very fine gentleman, a great racer, um, and a great pit man, Mike Garabia. If you're ra if you're <laughs> if you're racing at Indy, maybe you want this guy. <laughs> in the pits, uh, okay. changing your tire, fueling your car, being the crew chief, I don't know. what You did it all there in the, in the Well, in the I was pits, never a mechanic. You? I would never take credit for any of that, but I was fortunate enough to do tires and fuel and you know things like that, but not a mechanic. Uh, okay, so so answer me this question, because you had the, you actually did it, you had the experience in doing it. Okay, they're changing tires and fueling these cars in the pits in like eight seconds or less. How is that possible? <laughs> well, now we were 13, 14 seconds, I guess, in yeah, those days. Yeah, but now they are doing it in. Well, they have more guys over the wall. I think we only we were allowed five. Maybe they have seven now. I'm not sure. But in your seven. day, it was like 13 or 14. Yeah, still amazing. Yeah, it's all relative. But in, you know, people ask me that a lot, especially even in NASCAR. And these guys are athletes, and uh, especially the NASCAR guys, they're training every day. They have dietitians. They have weight rooms, and and kind of the earlier days. You just had a job, and that was your job, you know, and there was no really practice other than your daily job. In other words, you weren't going to a gym to do it and eating special meals and things like that. So it's all relative. Uh, we're all decent in our day, but they're a lot better now because they're better decent. trained athletes. 13 seconds yeah. is decent. 13 seconds is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, in my opinion. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, John. Good morning. I want to uh, ask Mike if uh, he, I have known them for all my life, just about. But, but uh, Mike, did you or your dad own Hazelwood Auto Repair? That's a good Hazelwood question. Hazelwood Butler? <laughs> no, that was Fred Diorian, and he was like my uncle. I grew up with, they, they were my neighbors, and I used to, we were, Bill and I were just talking about that. Uh, I would go sit there at the shop as a kid and just watch famous race drivers come through there all the time uh, because Fred was a, a well-known uh, IndyCar racer too. So he was really like my uncle. We saw him every day, but that was not my dad. That was Fred Diorian, and he had a son my age called Norman Diorian, and they were <laughs> yeah, my neighbors. I would, um... I, my memory is kind of bad. I couldn't remember. Yeah. But I used to go there when I was a teenager. Yeah. Fun and, place to hang uh, out. I still, I still live in the same neighborhood. But now I want to ask Billy that uh, he, his dad, and him was my idol, and I went to my little sister went to school with Billy there mm -hmm. at Winchell, Winchell. Mm -hmm. and. I went to school with Marlene at Sequoia Junior High School when they first opened it. Mm -hmm. So I I live in the same neighborhood that they did, and I just want to tell you that Billy, both the dad and Billy Junior there, were my idol, and I just want to tell them that very few of us are still alive, yeah. but they are the greatest, and so are you. Yeah. Thank but, you. And congratulations to both of you, Thank you for what you guys have done in racing. Because I used to do racing later on in my life mm -hmm. here at uh, Madeira and, and Bakersfield. And what's, Hanford, your, what's your what's your uh, name? Yes, uh, my name is Dave. Dave Wood. So, but I would, I did all the pit crew and for buddies of mine. So, D Dave, what's your last name? A uh, Roundsville, but you may not remember me because I was the shy type. And, uh, you know, I kind of stayed by myself. But I, I then when I got my shop in Clovis back in the 80s or 90s, uh, Marlene was my customer. Oh, mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just a, I, I was, couldn't wait for you two to get on there. 
So I want to I want to say congratulations to both of you, and it's sure good to see you guys setting up there with John. Thank you. Thank so you. you guys take care of yourself and have good health, and it's good to see you guys again. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. I want to ask you. Um, you're kind of a shy, humble person, it seems like to me. What what goes through your mind when you have people like our last caller here say that uh, you and your father, w was that you guys were both his heroes? Well, I just wondered what the guy was, what's the, what his name was. Ho 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 hopefully I could remember him, but yeah. obviously I can't. But, uh, but what goes through your mind when people say tell you that they looked up to you as a hero and uh, uh, they, they, no. idol they idolized you He's and your father? He's still my hero. I tell him that all the time. You know, he's my hero. You don't think much of it? No. Really? No. Do you thank him? Yeah, 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 for sure. But it, it must mean something. It must be, make your heart feel warm yeah, inside. Yeah, it does, it does, yeah. You know, that no, knowing you accomplished something, yeah. you had an Im impact or an influence on, on somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think you influenced other drivers to, to, to do well on the track like you, you did? Know, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know anybody. I know I used to idolize. My first hero was Blackie Dijian. Okay. Um, then Al Pombo. Yeah. Wow. Um, I don't know if anybody idolized me, but I, I idolized Blackie Dijian and Al Pombo. If you probably remember Al, the name Al Pombo, you probably don't remember Blackie Dijian. He was a promoter. Yep, here in Fresno. Relevant, yep. yeah. And uh, go ahead. But I don't know if anyone idolized me as a driver. Did you idolize any driver yourself? Yeah, Parnell, uh, oh, yeah. Parnelli Blackie Jones. Blackie Dijian. Oh, Blackie Dijian. Okay. And, uh, El Pombo. Okay. All right. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, I'd like to like to just tell both the gentlemen there, I really appreciate them coming on the, the TV. We've got a slight connection. Um, the last caller mentioned Marlene. She was a cousin of mine. Uh, uh, her maiden name was Amabel. Both uh, uh, my uncle Ralph and... and Ralphie Jr., who used to go to the races all the time, are, are now both deceased. But uh, just enjoyed seeing you. I liked the, the history. You did Fresno proud, both of you. Um, so just wanted to say that. Okay. Great. Thank you Thank for you. the call. What do you? What goes through your mind when you when you hear people call in and they say, you know, this guy was my idol. Well, he deserves it. I mean, I can tell you, he's still my idol. You know, yeah. and because I got to see Bill run when he first started running midgets and whatever. Till I think the last year you ran, you ran the team I was on mm -hmm. when we when we missed the show because we had bad cars. But he's a, wow. he's my idol. I mean, the guy he did it all. You know, and uh, he's not the kind of guy that's going to talk about it. But he doesn't brag, does no, he? No, you've looked guy. up the stats and you know what they are. And uh, yeah. He has an amazing record, but he's a very humble person, yeah. and uh, that's just Bill. Before we go to break, I want you to talk about your son, Bill the mm -hmm. Third. Let's put his picture up. We do have a picture of him, and uh, sadly, of course, he passed away in 1990. But what do you remember about your son being a great? How good was your son as a racer? He was better than I was. I can tell you that. He was absolutely. Yeah. In what way? Every way. Did he have more patience? Had more patience. Did he have more knowledge? More knowledge, faster, smarter, smoother. <laughs> Come on. And yeah. personality. And personality. <laughs> Tremendous personality. Yeah. He, had, he had the whole package. He did? Billy yeah. had the whole package. He had the Hollywood looks, mm -hmm. didn't he? And personality. Yeah. And it was genuine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was a good, good, I mean, just a good young man, you know. Yeah. As, 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 a, as, a, as a guy who, who didn't race, but you know racing yeah. inside and out, when you look at Billy Jr. here, and then you look at his son, how do you compare the two race-wise as drivers? If they went head-to-head -head at Indy, who well, would I win? See, you guys ran against other midgets, didn't you? Something? I ran one race with yeah. Billy. One yeah. Race you yeah. did? Billy. Yeah. Who'd you, who, who would you put your money on? Billy. <laughs> well, he would say that, and I, I know Billy was if, as good if not better. I, I, I see the major difference between Billy and his dad is Billy's kind of shy and humble, and Billy... Uh, just had his bubbling personality. I mean, it just bubbled. It, it he just was an extrovert. Yeah. Uh, he was contagious with uh, enthusiasm and happiness, and uh, he really loved what he was doing. And yeah. uh, that's the part that I think is the that I can judge on and be accurate with it. You I know? think my dad was an introvert too. Yeah, your dad was quiet, yeah. like like yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. But your son didn't take after no. you. He had this bubbly he personality. He had his mother's personality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was going to say yeah. that, but that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I see that in my kids too. I mean, one kid's like my ex, and one kid is like me. So it, you know, <laughs> it, it runs everywhere. Yeah. So, you know, but, you know, yeah. He'd always call me Mr. Garabini. I go, it's not Mr. Garabini, and it's Mike. You know, I mean, that's how he was brought up, I guess. And. You know, I really like that, but at the same token... I, I just find it fascinating that your father, I mean, he should have won three races in my book, and then you could have easily won a race and finished second. I mean, to race at Indy a dozen times is, is truly amazing. And then your son raced at Indy, what, three times? Mm -hmm. He Couple. finished Rookie of the Year Rookie in 1988. Yeah. I mean, that's a... Yeah. That's a Mike, yeah, it's, you couldn't write a better story no, than that. No, you can't. No. Could you? Uh, possibly with his best buddy who just passed away with Gary Buttenhausen. Mm -hmm. It's similar. Yeah. We were talking about that. That similar family, uh, similar trail all the way up. And I remember when Bill and Gary were the juniors coming up, and uh, they <laughs> were bitter rivals and became best of friends. Right? I mean, yeah. uh, because they had a lot of pressure on them. They were both the yeah. sons of major racers, and. Uh, then they became best buddies. We just lost Gary a year ago, I think, a little more than a year yeah. ago. Gary Bentonhausen, one of your best friends. Oh, his best yeah. friend, yeah. Yeah. All right. We're talking with Billy Vukovic, uh, Jr., and Mike Garabedian, and we're going to take your phone calls, of course. Continue here for the next uh, 19 minutes. 436, MeTV, option 11. We're back in just a moment. Retro TV, your home for classic television. The greatest shows in history are here for you to enjoy. Join Cosby and Colt as secret agent men in I Spy. Ride along the Ponderosa with the Cartwrights in Bonanza. Hit the beat with Joe Friday in Dragnet. And that's not all. Retro TV offers endless fun and excitement for the whole family to enjoy. Retro TV, the best in classic television. You can find Retro TV on Over the Air Channel 13.4. A top secret location. It's the spies who love me. Bringing together MeTV's top super spies to fight evil at a memorable moment's notice. They're daring. That's right. Free. Now what are we going to do? The best we can. Suave. Does that apply to me, Oscar? Possibly. And smart. The old finger in the gun trick. Maxwell Smart. MeTV Fresno. Channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. An amazing race, the 99th running of the Indianapolis 500 that took place on Sunday, of course, and uh, always takes place on Memorial Day. What a race it is. That's why they call it the greatest spectacle in racing. Juan Pablo Montoya won his second uh, Indy 500 in the last 15 years. This guy from Columbia, he's only, he had only raced there three times. Two out of the three, he walks away uh, with the trophy and a lot of money in his pocket and certainly sponsors up the you-know-what. And so let's take a look back at the Indy 500 from this past Sunday as Juan Pablo Montoya wins the fourth closest race in Indy history. 2008 Indianapolis 500 champion Scott Dixon led the field of 33 to the green, but in the first turn, Takuma Sato and Sage Karam make contact, ending Karam's day. Under caution, Simona Di Silvestro gets into Juan Montoya, forcing him to make an unplanned pit stop and sending him all the way back to 30th. The race returned to green with Scott Dixon leading the race once again. But it was an early battle for P1 between two former champions and Simon Pagano trying to get his first Indianapolis 500 win. The first pit stop of the 500-mile race came on lap 35 when the leaders came in for fresh Firestones and Sunoco fuel. The second yellow of the day comes out when Noblesville native Brian Clausen makes contact with the ball, ending his day. The pits opened up again and Simon Pagano took his first laps as the leader. Then the leaders were slicing and dicing for the top position. 2013 champ Tony Kanan parts Pagano and Dixon and takes the lead. Then the third caution of the day comes out on lap 113. Orioles Serbia and Ed Carpenter into the wall, ending both their hopes for an Indianapolis 500 win. Then disaster in the pits for Dale Coyne Racing. Two crew members were hit. Tristan Vaudier and James Davison climb out of their cars for the day. On lap 123, Will Power takes over the lead, but just one lap later, Pagano steals it back. Then Dixon comes into the mix before another round of pit stops on lap 148. 
Tony Kanan brings out the fourth caution of the day when he hits the wall. His day comes to a frustrating end after leading 30 laps. It's back to green with Scott Dixon out front again. With just 35 laps to go, Juan Montoya takes over the lead after working his way all the way back through the field. And the leaders pit one last time when a caution comes out for debris for Sato's car and Will Power wins the race off pit road. With 24 laps to go, there's another crash. This one involves three cars, including Sebastian Saavedra, Jack Hawksworth, and Stefano Coletti. All their days come to an end. The race gets back to green with just 16 laps to go, and it's a battle to the end with Will Power and Juan Montoya. With just three laps to go, it's Juan Montoya and Will Power side by side for the lead. Montoya gets the edge and wins his second Indianapolis 500 in just three starts. The finish is the fourth closest in history by just over one tenth of a second. Juan Montoya wins the 16th 500 for Roger Penske. Congratulations to him and all of Team Penske. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I've actually kissed those bricks myself. I, told, I, I, I know. I wanted to. I wanted to do it because I know that's like tradition there. And I. I because I. You know. Last time I was there in 1986, I didn't know if I would ever be back, so I did kiss the bricks. And uh, what a great place. And, you know, it's like, like you said, it's like going from here to L.A. and back yeah. and winning by a car lane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the race on Sunday, I Billy? thought it was great. I watched it with Mike. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was good. Yeah. So what do you make of this guy, Montoya? I mean, he... Um, I like Juan Pablo Montoya. He's a yeah. racer. A lot, he, he's yeah. truly a racer. He's, he's a racer. Yeah. yeah. Now, I want you to talk about him a little bit because you and I talked about this. He started in 15th. Um, originally, that that was the that was his starting position in number the number 15 slot. He had an unscheduled pit stop because he had a problem, I guess, with his car, and that put it pushed him back to last place when he got back into the race. So essentially, he came from the very last position to win the race. How much skill does that take, Billy? Pick it up. Yeah, he'd know better. I didn't know he had. I didn't know he started. He, he was the last at one time, though. Yeah. Um, is it's, that it's, skill it's, or it, luck? A lot, lot of it's luck. A lot of it's luck. You got to have a lot of luck in racing. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. What do you think, Mike? Skill or luck? A lot of luck. A lot of, a lot lot of luck. And, luck. And he's. I think I would call him a very aggressive driver. Very aggressive I mean, he driver. gasses it up. You know, he's not one that's going to be waiting around for things to shake out. He, from what I see, I don't know him. He goes hard. So he, he got himself up there with skill and luck. Yeah. But not just any driver would be able to move up like that. No. I don't think it takes a lot of driving skill to be able to maneuver through all of the crashes, the debris, and the slower cars. And you're talking about drafting. Um, Bill, you go ahead. You want to pick it well, up there? You know, I, I think Parnelli Jones was probably one of the, my heroes. It was probably, um, according to many people, one of Indy's greatest drivers. And he only won the race once, which is a career in itself. Yeah. These guys that win four in a row. Yeah. That's luck. Four times, not in a row. Yeah. Parnelli only won one, right? But one is a career. Al Unser, how many did Al Unser win? Al's won four. four. Parnelli, was, you'd say Parnelli was a better driver By than far. Al. And, By and far. And Mario only won one. Yeah, but Mario was a better driver than Al. Yeah, I think. that's what I'm saying. He only won one race. Yeah. Right. Only, but one, one race is a career. Yeah. Parnelli won one race. Al Unser won four. Parnelli was. A lot better than now. It's a lot of it's luck. We have a call here, but I want to ask you: greatest race driver in history, in your opinion? My dad. Your dad. My dad. At Indy. At Indy. Parnelli Jones, a, a close second. Yes, Parnelli would be second. How, where, where would you stack? Because you drove for AJ Foyt a couple of years. Where would you Where would you put AJ? Fifth or sixth. Who would be ahead of him? Parnelli and my dad. Yeah, and who Eddie, else? Eddie John Indy. Cock, yeah. Gordon John Cock. Really? Gordon John wow, Cock. that's interesting. Yeah, wow. he won it in 1982. 1973, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah amazing. Wow. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Caller? Are you there? Whoops, I guess he hung up. No patience. 436, me TV, option 11. Got to have a lot of patience here. Hey, I want to go to Tony Kanan um, and, and show him... Uh, he crashed, unfortunately, but I, I like Tony Kanan as a driver, and I thought, just by watching the highlights of this, I thought he was going to win the race, 
at one time. This is Kanan here. He, he crashed. What do you think of him as a, as a race car driver? I don't know Tony Kanan, and, and uh, I don't know any of these drivers nowadays. I, I, I don't know any of them. Is that right? Yeah, I don't know yeah. any of them. Same way, yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate. I mean, Kanan, I, I kind of follow Kanan a little bit, and uh, here he is here in the blue car. He's, he's going up against the wall. It looked like he had the car. He had, uh, he had the momentum, perhaps, to win the race, but... You know, Indy is a, you never know. It, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I gotta go to break here, but, but uh, Billy, correct me if I'm wrong, weather conditions have everything to do with the performance of your car yes, yes. at Indy. Yes. Why? You know, I don't know. You could go out in an hour after you practice, an hour later, and the car would ch completely change. Yeah. Because of weather? I don't know what it was, but it would change. And what do you think? I don't know the answer to that either. I but mean, it would it, change. Yeah, right? it, they change. Yeah, it's just amazing. So, uh, so you can go out an hour later, and the car is performing completely differently yeah, than same, it was. Same conditions. Yeah, everything. Same yeah. temperature. Same everything. But I, the car's just not just not doing what it did an hour ago. Yeah, and, and I don't know what that. Is. I've never quite got a handle on that either. But boy, Billy's exactly right. Yeah, and during the race they change a lot. And and that's the unique thing yeah. about Indy is that it's, it's ever-changing. Yeah. The car doesn't run the same all the time. I, I don't know if that's you know true in, in NASCAR, but uh, certainly at Indy. I saw that in the 80s. I mean, unbelievable. Billy Vukovic Jr. is here. Mike Garabedian is here. 436 MeTV Option 11. We had a call come in earlier. Got to be patient to call back. We're here for another few minutes. Uh, Continue watching. Connect with me on MeTV Fresno. We're back in a moment. We need help to find this missing child. Hallie Cummings was seven when she went missing. She was last seen in Satsuma, Florida in February of 2009. This is what we believe she looks like today at age 11. If you have any information, please call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST. That's 1-800-843-5678. Please help bring Hallie Cummings home. Got a few minutes left here with uh, Mike Garbedian and Billy Vukovic uh, Jr., who uh, raced at Indy a dozen times. Um, I want to ask you about sponsorship. Is it is it is it different than when when Billy's dad ran? To oh, yeah. Pick it up, Mike. Why? Well, because we of talking, sponsors. We were talking about it on that way over, and the way, the way I saw it, I kind of got through, went through the whole thing, and so did Bill. Uh, there were privateers or mm -hmm. rich sportsmen that owned a lot of the cars, like Aggie or people like that. So. There was a corporate money involved that you had to be a corporate spokesman. And, and guys like Billy, you know, they were just hardcore racers, I call them. Uh, nowadays, it's there's a lot more involved in that somebody's plunking down 10 million bucks to sponsor you. And in NASCAR, probably even more. Mm -hmm. Besides gassing it up, you got to be perfect, you know, uh, speech wise. You have to have the image. You have to have it all. And, yeah. uh, and a lot of the guys from Billy's era, uh, Including, I would say, Bill, we were talking, didn't have that. You know, uh, it would be very hard for them now to be in that corp. They could outrun most of these guys, but the corporate part of it probably the would Madison be more difficult. Avenue, the Madison Avenue that's image, yeah. yeah, yeah, and that, and that's, and him and his, his buddy Gary Bettenhausen, I call them hardcore guys. You know, they're not that old, but they were hardcore racers that just wanted to race. You know, they yeah. don't care about all the rest of the politics part. Well, you can put Johnny Rutherford in that same yeah. group with Billy, A.J. Foyt, Gordon Johncock, yeah. uh, Andretti, yeah. obviously. And they came from the same era. Hey, before we go to the next video, J.C. Agajani, the great promoter, had a big influence on you, didn't he? He was my favorite car owner. He was. Uh, <laughs> Why so? Well, uh, my rookie year, I drove for J.C. Agajani, a okay. great, great guy. Yeah. Just a great person. Parnelli drove for Aggie Janian too, right? He won with Aggie, won with the Parnelli, won with Aggie, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Quick phone call here. Good morning. Quickly, you're on the air. Go ahead, caller. Caller? Uh, yeah, this is on uh, with Bill Bogut, right? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, okay. quickly. Quickly. I would like to know if his book is still available. I loaned his book out. Mm. And I never got got my copy back. I'd like to buy it. And his dad was a good driver. And these two that you have there, they are very good, great, great guys. Thank you. Okay. I, I don't know if the book's still available or not. 
What's that? Give me the title. It's a, the, the, called the Vukovic. The Vukovic. It's a right? great book. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a great book. Yeah. The Vukovic. Family. Labor of Love. Yeah. 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 The book came out when? Well, How many years ago? Ten years ago. At least ten, ten years, years ago. At least, at ten, least years ago. ten years ago. Yeah. You raced in nineteen at the sixty-four Indy five hundred, did you 68. not? Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight, but six, oh, 68, you were rookie of the year. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I apologize. What am I thinking? Yeah. Sixty-four, sixty-eight. Uh, there was a there was a horrific crash in 1964 though. Where you were not at Indy quite no. yet. No. 65 was my first. Your first year, mm -hmm. but you remember the 64 oh, crash, sure, and I'm sure. sure you do. Let's roll a videotape. And uh, that's right, you were rookie here in '68. I set that up. So this was another horrific crash. Prior to the Swede Savage crash, um, this uh, race was won by A.J. Foyt. This involved seven cars, 80 sacks. Dave McDonald died. The last time the race uh, had been won yes, by a front engine roadster, of course, that being A.J. Foyt. You'll see the crash here in just a moment. So very vivid. And uh, you can see there, this took place in 1964. Uh, and that's when they had the front engine roadsters that ran during that race. And A.J. won, of course, the 500 that year. And you can see what happened there. So, what was your thought going into 1965 there? Uh, well, I'd watch Mike? that. I'd watch that on uh, actually at the Warner or Wilson Theater. They showed that live, and I watched that race in '64, not ever knowing I'd be back there in '65 working. And it kind of turned my stomach because I'd been around racing a long time. And I think what Bill just said, it was gasoline, right? Mm -hmm. And which they outlawed after that. That's why it uh, it exploded like that. Uh, methanol uh, doesn't have that volatility if that's the right word doesn't have that kind of explosive power yeah, is what exactly. you're saying yeah. it burns but it uh, burns but not like it doesn't explode Gasoline. like that yeah yeah and that was the last time a front engine roadster had won the race aj foyt mm -hmm. uh somehow managed to you know to get through the field and through the debris and and, and win that race we got about a minute left anything you want to add here mike because well i'm just glad bill's here and and gets to uh, and, and gets to uh expose himself even more because there's a lot of younger people that really don't realize you know who he was or even maybe who his dad or son was but and he's a legend and he's a legend and a legendary fam family the, the family is a legendary family and uh and when we go back to fresno sports this was fresno sports this family was fresno sports no uh, question about it billy jr okay thank you Thank you very much. You're a legend, and your family is, and congratulations on everything you've done. Thank you for being here today. I okay. appreciate it. Mike, My pleasure, John. you're thank a legend you. yourself. My no, friend. not really at all. Oh, Just yeah. lucky, right time. Yeah, thank you. Billy Vukovic, Jr. and Mike Garabedian. Glad to have them on the program today. Tomorrow, another sports program. We've got Jim Perez coming in. He owns that golf course in northwest Fresno. We'll tell you what he's up to. The latest on Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno each and every Monday through Friday on Comcast 187, 436, and 131. Have a great day. What golf course is he on? Want to create something extraordinary? Create perfection. Our lifestyle appliances make it easy. KitchenAid, Ventura TV Appliance and you, when only the best will do.